The first time I used the magnifying instrument, my first look into an eye, it was magical for me. And then, of course, like falling in love. After the first magical moment, you think about the realities, you rationalise it. And it had a lot of elements which I liked. Surgery, using my hands. And it's not life-saving, but it's sight-saving. That, to me, is very important. In my time, in the first two years, it was just a lot of theoretical. Well, we had practical, we had dissection, but you don't get near a patient. I was getting quite depressed. All this memory work, seeing things through the microscope, doing test tube experiments. But when I started seeing patients, then it made sense to the whole thing. We are doing this because we want to help people get better. And every patient is different. It was quite exciting. Doctors have, well, of course you have to master the technology. Technology has been with us for a long time, you know. It's just a way of doing things faster or more efficiently or better than we can do ourselves. But it's a good servant and a bad master. The important thing is to remember the doctor-patient relationship. It is still a commitment between the doctor and patient. And you're using the technology to fulfil your commitment. If we allow things to deteriorate or change to the extent where the patient can just go to an instrument and get everything done without any other human interference. Well, it shows that we have neglected that patient-doctor relationship. When I became president of Nature Society and then later as an NMP, mostly speaking on environmental issues, and I gave a lot of talks. I've always got this question, what are you as a doctor doing defending the environment? To me, there's absolutely no contradiction or discrepancy. I'm not just treating the disease, I'm looking at the patient holistically. You can't have a healthy person in an unhealthy environment. Nature doesn't have to be in a pristine jungle. Even looking at the sky or a tree is very relaxing. It takes you out of yourself and restores something in you back to you. There are a lot of um, studies now that have shown that this is in our DNA. We evolved from animals, grew up and learned how to survive in a natural environment. Although we may be surrounded by concrete now, we still can't cancel out that memory. I think it's very, very important for everyone's mental, emotional, psychological and physical health. There's so much technology in the forefront of our existence now and to remain human, we, especially as doctors, need to have a lifeline, not just with the environment, but with the humanities. We need to connect with other people. And the best way to connect with other people is through the humanities, the arts. The humanities are like a type of technology in, in that it expands your scope, it increases your reach, it strengthens your feelings, whether it's painting or writing or music. I think that aspect should be included in our medical education. We are already also finding, you know, that uh, you can have art therapy, music therapy, it's good for the patients, it's good for the patients, it's good for the doctors. So those are areas that I want to help the medical faculties explore and develop in a way which will benefit both doctors, doctors in training, and patients. So I'm, I'm working on that.